Sudhir, can you, um, or Asif, can you introduce Dr. Asprella? Sure. Um, welcome, Dr. Asprella, for, uh, for your wonderful uh, um, lecture on BPPV. Uh, Dr. Asprella is a vestibular ENT specialist uh, from um, uh, Policoro, Italy, and uh, he is uh, the one of the world's expert in uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. We are fortunate to have his presence today uh, discussing about some practical management pearls, uh, which will lead to benign paroxysmal, which will lead to successful management of BPPV. Um, uh, as we all know, BPPV is so common. They come in uh, ER uh, all the times, and uh, they, uh, that is one of the bread and butter in neurotology. So I truly hope that uh, the presence and this lecture from one of the world's experts on this condition uh, would enlighten our knowledge even further, and uh, I am pretty positive that you will enjoy it. Uh, Dr. Asprella, please. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hello from Italy. I am very glad to be here with all of you. And I am very pleased for your kind invitation. The topic of my talking is BPPV practical management. I would like to show you some news about the so-called strategy of the minimum stimulus, which means a basically an nystagmus based approach to the patient suffering from uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Or we know that the most common variant is uh, the posterior canal BPPV and uh, uh, lateral canal account for uh, about 20% of all the, the BPPV. According to a classical uh, conventional approach, uh, a patient suffering from positional vertigo must be uh, checked for uh, each canal and uh, for each side. Uh, in so doing, we must to check uh, before uh, posterior canal or right side, posterior canal or left side, performing the Dixol pike on each side. And uh, uh, continuously, we have to check the lateral canal uh, by performing uh, uh, the adroll test uh, supine. Finally, when uh, we have done uh, our diagnosis, we have to perform the therapy. So we must to perform a lot of maneuvers and uh, a lot of stimuli. In uh, so doing, uh, we could, uh, uh, we could uh, stimulate um, some uh, neurovegetative symptoms alike, such as uh, vomit and nausea. In, uh, my opinion, uh, an unconventional approach uh, uh, based on uh, an nystagmus uh, uh, approach uh, can allow us uh, to modify our uh, uh, program, a therapeutical and diagnostic program, choosing ongoing the most proper uh, therapeutic program for each patient. This is uh, the so-called uh, strategy of the minimum stimulus. In a conventional uh, diagnostic approach, uh, in uh, a patient suffering from posterior canal, we have to perform the Dixol pine maneuver on each side or uh, the Semon maneuver. In other words, we have to move the debris uh, inside the posterior canal uh, due to gravity or inertia. And, uh, to check if the typical and, uh, and the diagnostic of nystagmus appears. For lateral canal, we have to use the supine head roll test. I uh, suggest you to call it, it uh, as a supine head roll test, as the patient's head is uh, moved in along the vertical or Z axis uh, along the yoke plane. Uh, all we know that uh, the diagnosis of lateral canal has been done uh, by looking at the typical nystagmus, uh, which is uh, a nystagmus uh, uh, horizontal beating towards the ground direction in the, uh, in the geotropic variant and uh, away from the ground direction in the apogeotropic variant. 
or we know that uh, according to the Ewald uh, second law, the most intense nystagmus, uh, the strongest nystagmus, uh, beats always towards the involved side. Other signs uh, to diagnose uh, which one is the affected side have been described in the last year. Pseudospontaneous nystagmus uh, is uh, an nystagmus observed in upright position and uh, it is evoked uh, by performing the so-called head pitch test by changing the bending angle in upright position of the patient's head and searching for the null point or neutral point in the pitch plate. In other words, the bending angle forwards where the nystagmus stops uh, due to uh, null, uh, uh, no uh, activity or gravity moving the otoliths inside the involved canal. Another sign is uh, the sitting to supine positioning nystagmus and uh, these slides uh, summarize all the use to diagnose the affected side in lateral canal BPPV. First, the direction of the more intense nystagmus uh, in performing the ADO test supine, in the supine position is uh, always towards the affected ear and uh, both uh, the pseudospontaneous nystagmus and uh, the nystagmus evoked by the CT2 supine positioning test is towards the unaffected ear in the geotropic variant and towards the affected ear in the apogeotropic variant. This video shows us uh, a patient suffering from uh, positional vertigo. In upright position, she has uh, a right beating uh, pure horizontal nystagmus. It looks uh, like a spontaneous nystagmus, but in performing the head pitch test, uh, I can perform the differential diagnosis between uh, a direction fixed, which means uh, a spontaneous nystagmus from a direction change nystagmus. I am reached the neutral point in the pitch plane. The nystagmus stops when the patient said is bent 30 degrees forwards. In such a position, horizontal canal is perfectly aligned with the horizontal plane of the space. So gravity has no activity in moving the otoliths and the nystagmus stops. When the patient's head is bent uh, 60 degrees forward, so reaching the chin chest position, chin chest contact, the nystagmus reverses its beating direction. Now we have a left beating nystagmus. This proves us that we are looking to a direction changing nystagmus, which is also called pseudospontaneous nystagmus. We can presume that uh, there are otoliths moving inside uh, one of lateral canal and uh, in so doing they are provoking and direction changing nystagmus. Coming back uh, to reaching again the neutral position in the pitch plane, the nystagmus stops again. So lateral canal is working like a inclined plane along which we can move to and fro the otoliths by changing the bending angle of the patient's head and of course of the lateral canal. Coming back in upright position, the nystagmus is again to the right. When the patient's head in, is bent backwards, the right between nystagmus increases because we have an higher bending angle of the lateral canal. So gravity has uh, higher force in moving the otoliths along the lateral canal. Sitting to supine, once again a right between nystagmus. In such a position, the lateral canal is vertical, so gravity has uh, maximum activity moving the otoliths inside lateral canal. 
turning the head to the right, we have a right bit in nystagmus, which means a geotropics towards the ground direction. And finally, performing the head you test uh, while supine, we have uh, turning the head to the left side. left beating this tangles once again. This proves we are looking to a left geotropic horizontal canal BPPV. Something about the minimum stimulus strategy, it is a, a three steps strategy of approach. Three steps, uh, the first step is performing in upright position by performing the head pitch test uh, searching for pseudospontaneous nystagmus. Second step is uh, to move the patient from the seated to supine position. And finally, the third step is performing in uh, the supine position. As concerned the first step in upright position, in uh, changing the bending angle of the patient's head uh, forward and backwards, we must look if uh, we have we evoke, evoked a direction changing nystagmus. Uh, a direction changing nystagmus uh, evoked uh, by the head pitch test in upright position is a nystagmus due to otolis moving inside the lateral canal uh, due to gravity. I uh, would uh, remind you that the lateral canal in upright position uh, draws uh, an uh, open a front open angle of 30 degrees with the, the horizontal plane of the space but uh, sometimes uh, in performing such a maneuver the head pitch test in upright position in a patient with uh, a typical uh, history of uh, positional vertigo we can evoke uh, nystagmus with a uh, few components, uh, torsional and uh, vertical upright. We are looking to a uh, nystagmus, uh, torsional right, uh, up beating, suggesting uh, a diagnosis of posterior canal of right side BPPV. So I can continue by performing the right Dixol Pike, which confirms the correct diagnosis of posterior canal BPPV of the right side. So I can continue by performing the canalate repositioning procedure uh, according to Epley, turning the patient's head in uh, head engine position to the left, where uh, looking at the nystagmus, uh, we can clearly see that uh, it is beating once again in the same direction, torsional right, uh, vertical up which means the otolis are going towards the right direction, toward the common cross, towards the utricle. So I am asking the patients to turn all the body on the left side, always monitoring the evoked nystagmus. When the third position face down is reached, I can see a pure vertical down beating nystagmus, so which suggests that the otolis are uh, moving through the common cross. And uh, finally, I, I will ask the patients to come back to seat. I remind you that uh, you you must keep the, pa the patient's head uh, turned towards the unaffected side, the left one in this uh, case, uh, coming back to sit. And uh, in the last position, once again, we can clearly see a pure down beating vertical nystagmus, suggesting the otolis are falling in the utricle. The second step is the seated to supine positioning test. And uh, this test 
test such a test sometimes is useful to evoke typical nystagmus uh, for uh, suggesting a, a diagnosis of posterior canal BPPV because uh, the uh, gravitational component which moves the otolis in posterior canal sometimes is enough to move the otolis in performing such a maneuver and uh, evoke uh, the typical nystagmus suggesting a posterior canal BPV. So as concerns the second step, CT2 supine positioning test, we can have two options. If uh, any nystagmus uh, has been observed in upright position, we have to compare su such an nystagmus uh, with the nystagmus evolved by performing the CT2 supine in order to distinguish between uh, horizontal uh, direction change in nystagmus suggesting a BPPV or lateral canal from uh, vertical torsion and suggesting posterior canal BPPV. If uh, we have a known nystagmus in upright position, uh, CT2 supine position is test could evoke both horizontal uh, direction change in nystagmus or vertical torsion. Third step, uh, the final step uh, in the minimum stimulus start strategy uh, is performing in the supine position, crossing the data observed in upright position uh, in uh, performing the head pitch test and uh, in the second step, uh, sitting supine position test. We have to uh, check the patient for, for uh, the head yo test uh, in uh, Y supine adding which add as two information uh, the strongest nystagmus evoked by turning the head uh, from side to side which beats towards the affected ear and uh, this test allows us to distinguish between geotropic from apogeotropic form something about uh, a new test uh, which uh, has been uh, published uh, uh, in the in this year uh, it is called the upright head roll test uh, some uh, um, Italian researchers uh, um, Castellucci, Malara and Martellucci published an article about the upright head roll test uh, which is uh, performed by uh, bending uh, the patient's head from side to side to shoulder, to shoulder or the right side to the shoulder or the left side in upright position. This video shows us uh, a patient in upright position known as Stagmus appears but uh, when the patient's head is bent forwards a clear right between nystagmus appears. The physician is uh, performing the head pitch test in upright position. When the patient said is bent backwards, the nystagmus changes its beating direction and now it is uh, beating to the left. So it is a, a direction change in nystagmus. Now the head roll test in upright position is performed by turning the patient's head to the right and left beating nystagmus appears. It is of course apogeotrope. bending the patient's head to the opposite side, the left one, a right beating nystagmus appears, once again apogeotropic. The CT2 supine test evokes a left beating nystagmus
and uh, turning the patient's head uh, while supine uh, to the right side, a left bit in nystagmus appears, which means apogeotropic. Turning the, the patient's head to the left side, a right bit in nystagmus appears, uh, which means uh, apogeotropic once again. So, to perform in uh, upright position, the head pitch test before and uh, immediately after uh, the head roll test is uh, enough to diagnose uh, almost all the lateral canal BPPV with uh, an uh, upright BPPV protocol uh, which is uh, published in this last work uh, in uh, uh, published in uh, last uh, number in the next number of frontiers and uh, where uh, uh, will be published the experience of uh, many Italian centers uh, of vestibology uh, about uh, uh, 134 patients suffering from lateral canal diagnosed uh, with uh, lateral canal BPPV. Uh, this video shows us uh, how to perform uh, the upright uh, adrenal test and the upright protocol. This patient, young patient, suffering from positional vertigo, has uh, a pseudospontaneous nystagmus beating to the left, which changes its uh, beating direction bending uh, the patient's head uh, forwards. Now it is beating to the right and uh, coming back uh, in upright position stops and uh, starts to beat to the left uh, once again. So the head pitch test is uh, positive showing that uh, this is a direction change in nystagmus. So I'm going to check for uh, any nystagmus by bending the patient's head from side to side in upright position. Firstly, to the left, where uh, a right bit in nystagmus appears, apogeotropic. And then uh, to the right, where uh, a left bit in nystagmus appears stronger. So we can resume the diagnosis of uh, lateral canal BPPV apogeotropic variant of left side. Once again, backwards left bit in nystagmus. I remind you that uh, in the apogeotropic form, the pseudospontaneous nystagmus beats towards the affected sides and the strongest nystagmus beats always towards the affected side. Once again, head pitch test evokes a direction change in nystagmus. Next step is uh, seated to supine positioning maneuver. Ecogeotropic nystagmus once again evoked by the head roll test in upright position. In the supine position, a left bit in his tongue is evil. Turning the patient's head to the left side, 
apogeotropic nystagmus appears and uh, I'm sure that the affected side is the left one so I'm checking for uh, the transformation of, from apogeo to geo by turning the patient's head very quickly from side to side and uh, I start a barbecue technique towards the right side with uh, very brisk fast steps of uh, 90 degrees towards the right side. Coming back to the left we have uh, an nystagmus uh, still beating to the right so to, it is a uh, hypogeotropic nystagmus, so I can presume that the transformation didn't happen. So, looking at uh, the evoked nystagmus uh, step by step, I ask the patients to turn again all the body towards the right side in order to perform once again a barbecue technique. Now we have uh, a right between nystagmus uh, on the right side, so we could have uh, provoked the, the, the movement of the otolith from the anterior arm to the posterior arm. I perform once again uh, the barbecue maneuver and finally I ask the patients to come back to sit. We can clearly see that uh, the right bit in is uh, less intense and uh, coming back to sit, I'm going uh, to check again if uh, this uh, very poor right bleeding nystagmus changed direction. But uh, in performing the head pitch test, it doesn't change in its uh, direction, suggesting that uh, all the debris uh, have been uh, pushed out uh, from the involved uh, canal. Last video shows so uh, a patient male 54 years old with positional vertigo in upright position I am going to perform the head pitch test which evokes uh, down beating uh, with the head bent forwards and a pure torsional uh, to the right uh, with uh, the head bent backwards. So, I, I'm going to perform the right Dixol Pike maneuver. which uh, evokes uh, a very strong nystagmus uh, with uh, both uh, torsional and vertical components. And uh, the diagnosis is a posterior canal uh, BPVV of the right side. I'm going to perform the CRP procedure of Epley, turning the patient's head to the left and uh, asking the patients to turn all the body 
on the left shoulders so reaching uh, the face down position where uh, typical nystagmus appears once again with both component uh, torsional right beating and vertical up Finally, the patient comes back to sit. A pure vertical down beating nystagmus appears. I'm going to check again this patient in the same session performing uh, the right dixal pike uh, once again but the right dixal pikes evokes uh, a pure right beating horizontal nystagmus which suggests uh, uh, that uh, this patient now is suffering from a lateral canal BPPV he has uh, some neurovegetative syndrome so i'm going to perform the maneuver in upright position in order to evoke less intense nystagmus at pitch test which evokes uh, A very pure nystagmus but uh, the adderall test in upright position uh, clearly evokes uh, a lateral uh, canal uh, involvement because uh, a direction changing horizontal nystagmus is evoked on each side on the right side a right beating nystagmus and on the left side uh, left beating nystagmus after uh, a few second delay so I can confirm the diagnosis of lateral canal involvement and uh, I can uh, decide to perform uh, the Dufoni maneuver without previously perform any other diagnostic maneuver in the supine position in order uh, to try to solve uh, this uh, multicanalar involvement in the patient I'm explaining to the patients how to perform the maneuver keeping uh, the arm in the front of him and uh, it is important to explain step by step all the maneuver before to perform in order to have the uh, complete collaboration of our patients I'm cleaning uh, the fog on the, on the mask and this is the Guffoni maneuver on the left side a left beating nystagmus appears which means the otoliths are moving towards the utricle Once again, Buffoni maneuver on the left side, the nystagmus is less intense. I repeat the Buffoni maneuver until no nystagmus appears. 
estar de manobra, no estamos. So, in conclusion, I would like to give you some take-home messages. Uh, according to a step-by-step -step approach, uh, Malara suggested the pedatemptim from Latin, which means uh, gradually, step-by-step -step in, uh, in Latin. Uh, we perform a minimum stimulus strategy based on three steps. First steps, uh, search for pseudo spontaneous uh, by performing the head pitch test, adding the upright head roll test, because uh, such a test allows us uh, to uh, make the differential diagnosis uh, between uh, uh, apogeotropy from uh, geotropic form in lateral canal BPPV. Uh, the second step is the CT2 supine position in test, and the third step uh, is uh, the supine ADO test while supine. So I suggest to apply an nystagmus based strategy, always looking at the nystagmus evoked in each position, starting in the upright position the nystagmus suggests us where the otoliths are and the direction they are moving to. Uh, move the patient's head following the evolved canal plane because it allows us to avoid uh, a canal switch and uh, in performing any liberatory maneuver keep the otoliths always in movements which means uh, wait until the evoked nystagmus begins to decrease but not completely motionless in so doing, uh, we don't stop the inertial movement. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jacinto. We heard a, a quick answer in the chat. Can you read it? Sometimes, in second step of simply maneuver, a downbeat nystagmus is seen. Such cases, I feel, respond poorly to simple maneuver. Why that scores? Uh. <clears throat> Hello. Yes. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we don't have a torsional component in uh, the second step of the airplane maneuver. It is uh, important to move the patient's head along the uh, plane of the involved canal. Sometimes the patient's uh, uh, move up his uh, head in uh, turning from side to side. And uh, in this case, uh, two uh, bad conditions can happen. Uh, the otoliths move back inside the, the canal, or sometimes the otoliths can move in another canal, uh, so it is the canal switch uh, transforming posterior in uh, lateral canal. Uh, Jacinto, sometimes we get these posterior canals very nice, brisk nystagmus, and in the third stage, it falls back. I mean, you get a opposite, uh, if you're getting clockwise, when you turn the patient again, it becomes uh, anti-clockwise and you have to keep repeating it. So what do you do in these patients where it seems to go up and then falls backwards? Yeah, to actually, simply to check again your patient. Okay. I suggest to, to wait um, 30 minutes and uh, to check again. Uh, it is important uh, don't check uh, uh, in uh, a, a too short time because uh, you you have to wait until the autolytes move uh, in the back of the labyrinth of the posterior canal due to gravity. 